हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग रिगार्डिंग ऑर्गनाइजेशन ऑफ लेजिस्लेचर इन दैट ऑलरेडी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मीनिंग एज वेल एज अ सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ लेजिस्लेचर नाउ वील डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द ऑर्गनाइजेशन ऑफ द लेजिस्लेचर इन इंडिया सो हियर द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एडोप्टेड पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑलरेडी वी कम टू नो द मीनिंग द नेचर ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम and also made provision for bicameralism at union and state level so the constitution of india adopted bicameralism it means that existence of two houses so now we'll discuss regarding the organization of union legislature so here as in part 4 of the indian part 5th of the indian constitution as well as a chapter 2 of part 5th of the indian constitution deals with the indian parliament that means part 5th of the indian constitution provides the awareness regarding organization of union legislature then article 79 of the constitution states that indian parliament consist so it state that that means it states indian parliament consist of the president and the two houses of parliament namely the council of states that is known as rajya sabha and the house of people that is known as lok sabha so how the union legislature is organized union legislature is organized with the help of three characteristic feature one is the president another is the lok sabha and the rajya sabha with this structure union parliament is making set of legislation then bicameralism is a integral part of the indian parliament so the parliament of india adopted working with the help of two houses that is known as bicameralism so it is necessary why the indian constitution has adopted the second house why it has adopted already we come to know that the union cameralism means existence of the one house if one house is there it will give the way for the hasty legislation as well as the arbitrary law to overcome that concept the indian constitution adopted the second house with the help of the second house only it can put an end to hasty legislation that means unsound legislation will not come into an existence because always the second house will give its opinion in respect of passing of the legislation it criticize it give its suggestion whether the that bill is necessary or not so it prevent the hasty legislation for that purpose the union parliament adopted working with the help of two houses then it also helps in bringing balanced and equitable legislation not only it prevents the hasty legislation apart from it makes the balance as well as equitable legislation that means law must be equally applicable to all the people the law must be fair one good one just one it will be possible only with the help of the second house for that purpose only the constitution of india adopted the bicameralism to make set of legislation so here the lok sabha represent the nation so already we come to know that the union parliament is working with the help of the two houses in that the lok sabha that is the lower house represent the nation then the rajya sabha second house represent the state these two houses sit and function separately so both are having their respective organization or making of the legislation separately so and are constituted on different principles even the rajya sabha is having their own mode of organization presiding officers the members regarding the election it is having its own incorporated its own provisions to run its house functions or the proceedings so on that ground both houses sit and function separately and they constituted on different principles so in spite of that already we come to know that the president is the integral part of the parliament because the parliament consisting three characteristic features so then what is the role of the president so here the president is very essential to commence the parliamentary proceedings apart from that he is not a member of either house of the parliament being a integral part of the parliament 
he is not a member of either house of the parliament yet he is an integral part of the indian parliament but he is not a member of lok sabha or the rajya sabha but he is having the power he is having the power of summon sum, issuing the notice to two houses of the parliament that is known as summons he summons means he issues the notice to two houses of the parliament then prorogues that means he end the session and he is also having the power why he is considered as an integral part of the parliament because he is not a member of the parliament so the constitution has given the power in the hands of the president the president is having the power to issue the summons to both house of the parliament end the session both houses and he is also having the power of dissolution of the lok sabha not only he is having the power of the dissolution but he is also having the power of prorogation so without the presidential address the parliament will not commence any functions in respect of making legislation for that purpose the president is integral part of the parliament without the president the law will not come into an existence already we are aware that the main function of the legislature to make the law how the law will come into an existence after passing the bill by the two house of the parliament then after the speaker's consent then it will come before the president if president signs on the bill then the bill will come in the form of law legislation enactment so the president's consent is very consent as well as signature is very essential so for that purpose only not only he is having the power of signing on the bill but apart from he is also having the power to issue the summons to both houses of the parliament as well as the prorogation of the house that means ending the at ending the session as well as he is also having the power to terminate the duration of the house so uh, these all powers constitute president is a integral part of the parliament and then the parliament of india is a magnificent manifestation of the democratic ethos of our nation so the entire organization of the parliament is based on the based on the democratic principles so then here the constituent powers of the union parliament occupies a central position in indian democracy so apart from that union parliament plays a very vital role in indian democracy the powers of the parliaments are derived from the constitution of india which is a supreme authority so the parliament is having the power of the law making so where it gets the power so the parliament union parliament derives the authority in respect of making the legislation from the constitution it derives the power from the constitution to make set of legislation both house of the parliament enjoy the powers and status as per the constitution according to the constitutional provisions both houses are exercising their respective powers and functions whereas article 118 of the indian constitution empowers each house of parliament to make rules for regulating its procedure and conduct of its business so article 118 of the indian constitution provides certain powers to make set of legislation as well as the procedure to conduct its business so here how it makes the procedures how it makes the rules the for that purpose the parliament holds three session in a calendar year there are three sessions are there sessions means working the session means the working hours so budget session monsoon session winter session so with, within these three sessions only the parliament is making set of legislation or the duration of the each session each session is 6 months so whereas in case of the organization of the rajya sabha the upper house of the union parliament is called as rajya sabha upper house is known as rajya sabha now we'll discuss regarding the organization of the rajya sabha so rajya sabha is also known as council of the state as well as it is also known as upper house of the union parliament 
so or it is also known as council of state so the members of rajya sabha are elected by the elected members of state legislative assemblies to represent the respective states of india so the members of rajya sabha are elected by elected members of state legislative assemblies so here the rajya sabha is full of state representatives so that way here however the indian states have not been given equal representation so equal representation has not been given to all the state in the upper house as in the senate of the usa so in usa constitution it has given equal representation to all the state that means from one state one representation so that depending upon the population they have given the representation but that is not uniform in case of india but in case of united states of america all the states are having equal representation to give their suggestion in respect of placing the bill then how it is composed so regarding the composition how many members it consists how it functions qualification regarding the members of the rajya sabha so in that the rajya sabha consist of 250 members so the rajya sabha consisting 250 members out of this 238 members are representatives of states and union territories and the remaining 12 nominated by the president from the amongst the distinguished persons in the field of literature science art social service the nominated members do not participate in the election of the president of india so here the rajya sabha consists of 50 members out of that 12 members are nominated by the president so from the they possess distinguished no uh, skill in different fields so like literature art science but the nominated members they are having no right to participate in the election of the president of india then who will preside over the entire functions of the rajya sabha so the vice president of india he is the ex officio chairman of the council of the state he presides over all the functions of the rajya sabha so vice president before acquiring the post of the vice president he is serving in rajya sabha as a ex officio chairman he is having the power to act as a presiding officer of that house the chairman of the rajya sabha enjoys a dignified position he presides over the rajya sabha maintains discipline and decorum of the house he is having the power of protecting the pro, maintaining the proceedings as well as maintaining the discipline in the house then he introduces members to the floor allows time to discuss decides points of order presents questions and announces the result he is not only having the power of exercising as a presiding officer he is also having the power to introduce the new members to the floor as well as give the time to regarding the discussion of any of the bill and he presents the question being a officer of the house he will present the question he will make some discussion and finally he will announce the result regarding the any of the bill bill in respect of passing of the bill in respect of any of the matter so the chairman of the rajya sabha conducts the proceedings according to the rules and regulation of the house because the rules and regulations are laid down in the constitution according to that only he has to run the functions of the rajya sabha but he is not a member of the rajya sabha but he is entitled to cast the vote in case of a tie he is not a member but in case of any casting of the vote then that time only he is having the power to cast the vote so here the presiding officer of the house is the vice president so he is also known as ex officio chairman of the rajya sabha so then another officer will in will have the power to take part in the proceedings of the rajya sabha that is known as a deputy chairman of the rajya sabha so chairman or deputy chairman both are having the power to maintain or to run the organization of the house 
So here the Rajya Sabha shall elect a deputy chairman from among states member. So out of 250 members, one person will be act as a deputy chairman. In the absence of the chairman, he presides over the house. Whenever the president chairman is unable to run the functions of the house under such circumstances, the deputy chairman will preside over the functions of the house. So that has been mentioned in Article 89 of the Indian Constitution provides regarding the post of the deputy chairman. Then the constitution also laid down certain characteristic features or qualification to become a member of the Rajya Sabha. If any person want to become a member of the Rajya Sabha, he must fulfill following conditions. Then only he is eligible to be a member of the Rajya Sabha. In that the first one, he must be a citizen of India. First one, he must be a citizen of India. He, have, he must attain the age of 13 years. First one, he must be a citizen of India. Second one, he must be completed the age of 30 years. Then while contesting for the post of the post of the Rajya Sabha or as a member, he must not hold any office of profit. That means he must not be serving in any government organization. If he is serving in a government organization, he has to resign from the post. Then only he is having the power to contest the election. Then last one, he must have other qualification prescribed by the parliament. So, whatever the um, rules and regulations laid down to become a member of the Rajya Sabha, he must possess all those qualifications. Then only he is eligible to become a member of the Rajya Sabha. Then what is the nature of the election? How he will be elected? How the members are elected? Already we are aware that the Rajya Sabha consisting 250 members. Then what is the nature of the election? Apart from that, 12 members are nominated by the president. Then remaining 238 members, how they are appointed, on what base, by way or by election or by what is the nature of the election to become a member of the Rajya Sabha. To that extent, the member of the Rajya Sabha are elected by the elected members of legislative assemblies of states. Each legislative assembly of the state will elect the member then in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote system that is the procedure all the legislative as members of the legislative assemblies of the states are having the right to cast the vote for the for to become a member of the Rajya Sabha each member is having a single vote then coming to the term of the house the Rajya Sabha is a permanent house it cannot be discussed, dissolved. It can't be dissolved because it is a permanent house. Dissolve means ending the term. The question will not come into existence because it is a permanent house. So, its members are elected for a term of six years. One third of its members who have completed six years of the term retire every two years. Being a permanent house, only the members will retire every six years. Who, whoever has completed the term, the election will be taken place only to the vacated post. Every two years by way of rotation, whoever's term got complete, they have to vacate from their seat. Then the election will be taken place only to the vacated post, not for the entire house. On the basis of that, the Rajya Sabha is a permanent house. Then the Rajya Sabha was constituted for the first time on 3rd April 1952. In India, it was constituted for the first time on 3rd April 1952. So, this is the organization of the Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha is known as the upper house of the parliament or it is also known as the, the council of the state. Then it is composed with the help of 250 members. 12 members are nominated by the president, remaining 238 members are elected by the state legislative assemblies of the state by way of single proportional transferable vote. Then to be a presiding officer of the house, deputy chairman as chairman of Rajya Sabha as well as the deputy chairman. So the chairman, the vice president of India is ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha. 
as well as in his absence the deputy chairman will preside over all the functions of the rajya sabha then to become a member of rajya sabha he must be completed the age of 30 years he must be a citizen of india he must while contesting for the election he must not be a, he must not hold any office of the office of the profit if he is serving any government organization he has to resign from the post then only is eligible then apart from that if whatever the conditions are laid down by the parliament he has to fulfill all those conditions then only he is eligible to be a member of the rajya sabha once he he appointed or elected as a member of the rajya sabha he will remain in term 6 years so the term of the member is the 6 years the because the house is permanent the dissolution will not applicable only whoever's term got completed they have to retire from they have to vacate their seat from the house then election will be taken place only to the vacated post so this is the structure with this structure the rajya sabha is functioning with the help of 250 members then two presiding officer that is the chairman vice president of india is ex office chairman of rajya sabha then deputy chairman then what are the powers and functions are exercised by the rajya sabha to that effect so the first one the legislative function all ordinary bills can be originated in the rajya sabha except money bills rajya sabha is having the power of introduction of the bill all bills can be originate on the floor of the rajya sabha except the money bills so rajya sabha is having the power to introduce all the bills all the bills means ordinary bills so here bills means here statement so rajya sabha is having the power to place any statement on the floor of the house except the money bill both house of the parliament enjoy co equal powers on ordinary legislation both means the lok sabha as well as the rajya sabha both are having the equal power to place any bill on the floor of the any bill means ordinary bill on the floor of the house then when a bill is passed by the rajya sabha it is sent to the lok sabha for concurrence when there is a disagreement between the two houses the president summons a joint sitting of both the houses for the purpose of deliberating and voting on the bill any bill is to be passed by the majority of the total number of the members of the both houses present in the voting then bill will be forwarded to the president for his assent so the role of the rajya sabha is the rajya sabha is place the bill on its floor then after placing the bill it has to send to the lok sabha for his consent if the lok sabha has not accepted the bill passed by the rajya sabha then the disagreement means the other lok sabha has not accepted the bill passed sent by the rajya sabha so then there is a lot of disagreement between the two houses regarding the passing of the bill under such circumstances with the intervention of the president what the role of the president is very essential already we come to know that president is integral part of the parliament so with the intervention of the president or the president will issue the summons to each house of the parliament that means he will issue the notice to the two house of the parliament then he will call joint sitting he will call both house of the both houses and then he will discuss the bill so regarding after the discussion he will put vote for the passing of that bill suppose if the bill has passed by the majority of the total number of the members of the both houses then the bill will be forwarded to the president for his assent so here this is the one of the power exercised by the rajya sabha regarding the placing passing of the bill in case of the ordinary bill then coming to the financial functions of the rajya sabha because already we come to know that so the rajya sabha is having no financial power under such circumstances the rajya sabha does not enjoy any powers on financial matters money bill cannot be introduced money bill money bill means what here relating to the financial matter increasing the salary decreasing the salary regarding the revenue distribution of the revenue between the state and the center regarding the taxation 
so regarding the expenditure or placing the budget bill or taking the money from the consolidated fund or the contingency fund regarding any of the matter relating to the finance such type of the bills must be placed on the floor of the lok sabha only rajya sabha is having no power to introduce the money bill so that way with this structure then that after a money bill is passed by the lok sabha because always the money bill will be introduced on the floor of the lok sabha only so after the origin of the money bill on the floor of the lok sabha the lok sabha will send that bill to the rajya sabha for the consideration for the giving the reference the rajya sabha cannot keep the bill for more than 14 days so rajya sabha is having no power to keep that bill beyond the 14 days in case if the rajya sabha has not sent the bill within the 14 days then within the set time it is deemed to be accepted so after 14 days the lok sabha will not accept the any of the suggestion given by the rajya sabha lok sabha will think that as if it is passed by the rajya sabha only it will not wait after 14 days so it will think that as if it is passed by the rajya sabha only so this is the financial functions of the rajya sabha apart from that administrative functions judicial functions electoral functions special powers of the rajya sabha that we'll discuss in the next session regarding the remaining functions of the rajya sabha